Hi, I'm Dr. Becky Spellman, and if you're enjoying these videos, you can subscribe to my channel or click on the bell thing on the channel, which allows you to get notifications about my videos. I'm going to talk about a topic that comes up quite commonly with my clients, and it is to do with sexual assault or childhood sexual abuse or rape that someone has experienced, and they're very nervous or ashamed of telling their partner. Now, one thing to point out is that when people experience trauma, there is often an elevated sense of shame or disproportionate self of shame, sense of shame in that someone often, it's quite common that people don't want to ever talk about the experience or share the experience with others. When people don't hold this degree of shame, things are a lot easier for them. And that's actually one of the things we often work on in therapy is helping eliminate or decrease the degree of shame someone feels so that they can actually talk about the experience more openly, particularly in areas of the life where it's important, such as in their relationships. I have clients who come to me who often say things like, I will never tell my partner about the sexual abuse I have experienced or I'll never tell my partner about the, the rape in incident. They just won't understand or they'll see me differently. People often have really strong beliefs about what their partner is going to think without having very much evidence that their partner will definitely think in this way. For example, a client said to me, I'm not sure about telling my partner about the rape incident because they may not marry me, which is quite an extreme assumption, discounting all the other aspects of the relationship but yet being very nervous because of that extreme assumption. I have got a male client who believes that it would not be appropriate to share this in a relationship for fear that females would judge him negatively and see him as less of a man because of what happened. So this is a really difficult topic for people to share with partners because of the shame they experience. And as a result of the shame, there's a massive assumption about what their, their partner will think. Now, it may be the case that a partner does judge someone negatively because someone has had a very negative experience and maybe that's actually better to find out so that you know the person that you are with and to realise that actually your partner is not a very compassionate person. However, if you're with a compassionate partner, then you might actually get a reaction of shock, maybe worst case scenario, because they might be surprised that this has happened to you. Uh, or they might feel or they might react a bit uncomfortable because they don't know exactly what to say. But a compassionate partner is going to be understanding and they're going to look at the rest of the relationship and make a judgment on that. Of course, it can cause problems if you disclose this too soon, too early in a relationship. Um, but it really does depend on the way that you say it. So if you present it in a way where you're showing high degrees of embarrassment and shame, difficulty talking about it, and this person doesn't know you very well, and uh, if you're still showing signs of being very affected by it, then maybe it might be too much for your partner to handle, particularly if they feel there's an obligation on them to try and help you through it. And of course, a partner who's looking at a healthy health uh, relationship in a healthy way is not going to want to play helper and this may put them off. So the point I'm trying to make is that it's really important when you share the information, how much rapport you've built up with that person and also how you're presenting it with, uh, to them. It really comes down to an individual case by case basis, but often the advice that I'm giving to someone is wait until you feel very secure in that relationship and you've had lots of positive, supportive experiences together and you know that your partner really loves you no matter what. And once you have that strong sense of security in the relationship, then you know actually you can share things and your partner doesn't just have limited references to go by. And when you're in that secure relationship, sharing something like this with a loving partner should not make any difference. It should be something that you're able to talk openly about and also talk about how it affects you, particularly how it affects you in relation to your sex life. Now, I did kind of make a recommendation about waiting some time before sharing 
this with a partner. However, there are some exceptions to this. And one of the exceptions is if this is something that still really triggers you in your sex life, you may need to share it with a new partner much earlier so that they can understand the experience that you're going through in having sex with them. So if you know that because of your past sexual abuse, you're very easily triggered, and feeling very strong negative emotions in relation to sex, then this is something that I would recommend that you share with your partner before you're intimate with them so that they can understand. And the way to share this would actually be to present it in a way that you explain you want to have a serious conversation with them about something that happened to you that still affects you now, but that you don't expect them to help you with it or to fix it in any way. You just want to explain so that they can be understanding towards you if this gets triggered in your intimate life. And then you can explain as much as you feel comfortable about the situation. It's not necessary to go into every single detail. You might just want to say that it's happened and leave it at that and politely say to them that you're not comfortable about talking about it any further if they want to ask very specific questions. Alternatively, if you do actually want to speak about it more in more detail, uh, then this could actually help release you from any shame that you're still holding about the topic. So really, this comes down to how you feel about this incident. Is it still impacting your life? Does it still feel very negative for you to talk about in that you're probably still affected and still traumatized in a way and therefore it needs to be addressed in your relationship otherwise it could have a negative impact on your relationship and your partner may not understand what's going on or if it's something that no longer affects you and you're over the instant but it's still very shameful for you or still very difficult for you to talk about then you might decide carefully decide when you're actually ready to share this if at all uh, the one thing i would say about people who decide never to share this with their partner um, and, and if that's a very long-standing relationship, I would ask, well, why not? What is the problem with sharing this? Is it because it feels too shameful? And then I would explore the emotion of shame. And is that actually proportionate? Should that person really feel shame from being a survivor of sexual abuse? And often it's important to really help people overcome that shame so then they have no problems talking about it if, this, if the conversation comes up. They can easily speak about it because it's just something that happened in their life that they have overcome. And the reason I'm talking about this topic is because this is a very common thing. This occurs for one in six women, one in six females will have had a situation in their life where there will be some sort of sexual assault attempt on them and one in 12 males will have experienced the same kind of situation. So this is something that really does happen a lot for people and therefore I think that awareness should be raised and people should be able to talk about it but not talk about it in a way where they feel like they're very different and that they're the only one that this has happened to. People should be able to speak quite openly and, uh, and be able to have worked through this situation enough to be able to share it with a partner without holding that awful fear that their partner is going to leave them or not marry them or not love them anymore just because they were a victim of some kind of sexual assault. If you found this video useful then you can subscribe to my channel and once you subscribe there is a bell icon which will notify you about further videos. Also if you want to ask a question leave a comment below or contact me via my website.